everyone, Miss Art here to give you my Naruto chapter 631 review. Oh. Mm. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? That is the feeling of experiencing something epic. Of experiencing something you have waited years to see again. In your fandom. Team 7! Team 7 is back! Oh god! Literally! It's been years. It has been years. If you've been a Naruto fan for a very long time, this is a moment you thought would never happen <laughs> because it's been taking so goddamn long. But it has happened. It has happened, fellow fans, as of this chapter. Team 7 is whole again. Like this. <laughs> oh, but that's just one of the amazing things we got in this chapter. Seriously, this chapter... Of course, I read this the moment, the second, maybe two seconds after it was released on Manga Panda. I was on there. Refresh, 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 refresh. I figured something epic was going to happen. I didn't realize what a treat we would get with this chapter. But let's get into it, shall we? So, of course, 6.30 left us with the epic arrival of Namikaze Minato as he saves the day by transporting uh, the Jubi's Bijudama way off into the sea. And it's at the beginning of this chapter that we see the aftermath of its explosion. Even though Minato sent it way off into the ocean, its explosion, its blast radius, affects the battlefield. Which just goes to show you how powerful Jubi is becoming with each transformation. We see Minato looking over his shoulder and giving Sakura a look. And of course at this moment Sakura realizes that this mysterious man who's appeared in front of them is an Edo Tensei zombie. And it's at this moment that the chapter has like a Narusaku moment. If you are a fan of this pairing, you got some goodies in this chapter for sure. Actually a lot of uh, OTPs got some uh, time in this chapter. <laughs> I guess that's what makes this chapter a bit of a treat for, you know, if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, but we see that Minato decides to ask if that girl healing Naruto is his girlfriend. Of course, Naruto being dumb is like, oh well, yeah, I guess so. You know, this would be the same response if Jiraiya had been asked if Tsunade was his girlfriend. He probably would have said, well, yeah, I guess so. And of course, Sakura gets mad and punches him. And her and Naruto have a little back and forth banter. And this reminds Minato of um, himself and Kushina. Uh, so yeah, that just kind of cemented the whole, what? Narusaku? Okay, whatever. Of course, everyone at this point is being alerted to the fact that there are new arrivals uh, on the battlefield. And da da da! We get the rest of the Hokages. Hashirama, Tobirama, and Hiruzen appear. After, moments later, they appear, there they are, the first four Hokages, and of course as we suspected, the whole reason they're a little behind is because Minato is just that fast. So fast that Tobirama even says, wow, your Shushin, your, you know, time-space jutsu is even faster than mine. So that just goes to show. But I love Hashirama at this panel because his hair is like, whoosh. And he's like, I love crashing parties! <laughs> and it looks, literally, it looks like he's about to headbang. Like, heavy metal, hair swinging around. I would love to see that. I wish that was happening. Of course, everybody's freaking out. Oh my god, those are the previous Hokages. They've been resurrected, but by who? And Hiruzen says, um, Orochimaru. But it's clear uh, that, you know, the rest of the gang is probably not far behind. And it's at this moment of the chapter that one of my favorite parts happens. And that's, uh, <laughs> dear old Madada's reaction to Hashirama. He is so excited. He's leaning over and he's like, oh, I've longed for this day. Hashirama. <laughs> and that face, he's making another crazy face. And of course, Hashirama shuts him down. He's just like, I'll deal with you later! And then just like ignores Monada. And Monada's like shocked. His face just like stays frozen, like, ah. Uh. <laughs> Clearly, I think the reason for this, the reason for Hashirama's 
sour response because you remember Hashirama was excited to see Madara. He was pumped to know what his buddy had been up to. He just didn't realize that it involved his granddaughter getting cut in half. So that's what I think happened. The Hokage came across the current Kages on their way to the battlefield and Hashirama learned of the destruction that Madara had been waging at a personal level. It was his grandbaby that Madara cut in half. I would be a little upset too. Um, so it's at this point that the Hokage begin to implement their plan. And to start off, we get Minato going chakra mode. QB chakra mode. Full on flashlight. Turn it on, pink flames. Oh my goodness. When I first saw that panel, I thought it was Naruto because we've only ever seen Naruto in that mode. But no, Minato, like a boss, turns on that mode for the first time and is ready to go. So I thought that was very impressive and just goes to confirm and remind us if we didn't already know, I've been harping about this, that Minato has half of the uh, Kurama's chakra sealed inside of him, which I think eventually he will bequeath to his son um, thus giving Naruto a true power up. But right now I think it's very smart that Minato is choosing to use it um, himself in order to take care of the Jubi, in order to you know increase their chances of being successful at uh, doing some sealing the Jubi. I don't know what they're planning to do to it. But this is how the plan starts. Uh, Minato in chakra mode, he has already placed uh, three or no he's already placed um, the barrier, the little kunai uh, around the jubi so that he can uh, use the flying god, thunder god technique and get the other three kages to their locations. And from their locations, they begin to create a barrier. And I guess it's the color red. Of course, this is black and white. We can't tell. But it's called a red barrier. And just to be extra safe, uh, uh, Hashirama goes into... Mokutone sage mode. He goes into a sage mode so he gets that that cool patter patterns around his eyes and the the gates, the temple gate things start to fall from the sky. And we've seen this before um, when uh, Naruto was learning to control Kurama and he summoned those sealing gates. And so Hashirama for each of the ten tails he creates a gate. So I guess this indicates that they're trying to seal the Jubi away. Again, I'm not clear on the specifics of what's how that's going to happen. It's at this moment though that our dear misguided uh, Uchiha arrives with Jugo. Sasuke, Sasuke has made it to the battlefield. And of course Sakura's face, that's the first thing we see after he arrives. Uh, Sasuke-kun? What? But Naruto does not look surprised, of course, because Minato gave him a little heads up, but Sakura is just, she's taken back, and everybody else, the Konoha 11, are very surprised, and it's at this point we get their reactions. This is the first time they've all been reunited, um, so of course there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of anger, what are you doing here, you know, don't get too close, you know, <laughs> everyone is just doesn't know how to take Sasuke being there. And it's at this point that Sasuke, he, he does not, he's not showing a lot of emotion. In fact, he looks very calm. And it's at this point that he reveals that he doesn't care what everybody else thinks about him. He's here now to protect the village. He's decided to take up Itachi's mantle. And he wants to become Hokage. Oh my! Hokage Sasuke! I've heard this theory being thrown around for a while. But oh my goodness, <laughs> it has now become canon. Sasuke wants to become Hokage. Uh, so <laughs> as far as the characters, the Konoha 11's reaction to this revelation, of course they're shocked. WTF. Uh, this is a, if you weren't already toying with this idea in your mind, it was a WTF for you as well. On a personal level, like, like I said, I'd heard this theory before, um, people, you know, arguing for it. So it wasn't surprising, but it was still kind of what the fuck for me. <laughs> I was like, really? Sasuke has just thrown all his cards into this new dream of his to protect the village and to become Hokage. So 
I didn't really know how to take it at first, but Sasuke gets a moment to explain why he wants to, you know, become Hokage. He says, basically, that he doesn't care, of course, what the other people are thinking. He wants to become Hokage so that he can change uh, the way, like, Hokage's govern. You know, it's from the past, mistakes of the past Hokage, from the things he's learned from talking to Hashirama, and the previous Hokage, that the mistakes of the previous Hokage are never repeated again. That, you know, situations will not be allowed to fester, that lead to such tragic events like the Uchiha clan massacre. Sasuke believes that if he is at the helm of the village, he can make sure that, not, personally, he can make sure that that never happens again. Which makes sense, because the Uchiha clan massacre is the whole source of Sasuke's pain in life. So it doesn't surprise me that Sasuke has turned his focus or that he's suddenly so focused on this new goal to become Hokage and to protect the village because that's how his character has operated throughout the series. He's always been incredibly focused on one goal. Of course in the beginning it was revenge and he did everything in his power to get more powerful and to you know, get revenge for a number of reasons. Those reasons, you know, shifted as he learned more things from different people. And then after revenge, he became a seeker, you know, trying to find the absolute truth. And that's when he consulted, you know, Kashirama and the Hokages. And now his focus has shifted narrowly again to protecting the village now and becoming Hokage. So that whole, you know, being very focused doesn't surprise me. It's just, you know, having known Sasuke for so many years as an Avenger, it's interesting. I'm trying to get used to the idea that he now wants to be a protector. He wants to be a defender now. He's gone from Avenger to Seeker to Defender. So, very, very dynamic character development for dear old Sasuke. But it's at this moment, you know, Naruto's listening to Sasuke's, you know, explanation of why he wants this title. And Naruto thinks of Itachi, and Itachi's wise words to him, basically that it's not, you don't become Hokage to get acknowledged, you are elected to Hokage because you are acknowledged. And so here we are, we know that Sasuke is basically representing the first part of, Sa er, of Itachi's speech, that Sasuke probably wants to derive acknowledgement by becoming Hokage. Whereas Naruto um, becoming Hokage, he would become it because he has been acknowledged. You know, he is a hero. He has gone from zero to Hokage level. So here we are, Kishimoto has set us up with two dynamics. Um, they both want the same thing now, Naruto and Sasuke, but they're approaching it from two completely different perspectives. The perspectives that Itachi outlined. So, very, very interesting. What does this say, though, most importantly, about Naruto and Sasuke's final fight? Is it gonna be over Hokage now? They both share the same dream, essentially, now. You know, they're, they're on the same sides. How are they going to fight? And the only logical thing I can think of is they'll fight over the title of Hokage. That's the only thing that makes sense. So, there we go, Sasuke's on the battlefield. You'll also notice though that Orochimaru, Karin, and Suigetsu are not there yet. And my first thoughts on that is because they're slower than everybody else. I'm sure they couldn't go as fast as Sasuke and Jugo, and of course they couldn't go as fast as the Hokages. So I think they're going to arrive eventually. If it's be not because they're going slower than the other people in their party, maybe it's because they're going to arrive with the other Kage, because I really think the other Kage are about, eventually, very soon, they're going to make their own appearance. Um, so maybe they'll arrive with them, but we'll see. So I thought Hashirama's comment about hearing all this, I'm going to be Hokage, no I am, just his thoughts about, oh, no that's great, we have so many wonderful Hokage candidates, but can we focus now? <laughs> we gotta direct our attacks towards the Juvie. So the fact that Hashirama is, you know, speaking to the people behind them um, makes me think that they are going to be included. They're going to be very, um, you know, important in this plan to take down the Juvie. So, 
Of course, Naruto and Sasuke are ready to go. They jump ahead out into a rock, and before this, Naruto says, "All right, good job, Sakura. You can stay in the background." But it's nice. Not Sakura ain't taking that. She does not take that. She jumps up right there with her fellow teammates and says, "No, you're not leaving me behind." Girl power. You know, I was trained by Asanin as well. Um, you know, these three are like the next generation of the Sani. She's like, Tsunade-sama, you know, just doesn't train us to hang in the background. Uh, right. <laughs> so, it looks like Sakura is going to get a chance to shine. She suggests that once she gets her chakra levels back up, she'll be able to unleash her full power. So, up to this point, I don't think we've actually seen her full power. So, uh, my expectations are up, Sakura. I want to see you kick some butt because, you know, her character has always been, you know, tertiary. It's always been the third in this group. It's always been Naruto, Sas Sasuke, and Sakura. So it's nice to see her, Kishimoto bringing her to the forefront. Like, don't forget about me. Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I'm not going to be able to kick some ass. So come on, Sakura, show us what you got. Um, and that's how the chapter ends. Team 7 united again. Facing the Juby, gonna take it down. So, overall, my feelings on this chapter, it was very, very good. In many ways, I feel like we got some fan service from Kijimoto because we got so many good things. We got the arrival of the other Kages. We got, you know, all these meetings, all these reunions. Sasuke and, you know, Naruto and Sasuke and, you know, with the Konoha 11. And of course, we got Minato and Naruto, and don't forget about Hashirama and Madara meeting again. So many different things. We got like these OTP references all over the place. We got Narusaku over here, and then we got like Hinata looking at Sasuke. I know people are starting to go off on that. So, and you know, we've got Minato going, you know, that Kurama chakra mode. So, Lots and lots of interesting things in this chapter. This was a very special chapter. Very, very, very special. Going down in the history of the Naruto manga is being the most, one of the most special. So for that reason, I have to give it an awesome review. Uh, awesome, yeah, like thumbs up. Yay! I know in my written review, I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 Tobies. I just know it. It's just one of those chapters. It's just one of those chapters. But I have to say, Madara, what are you doing? <laughs> Mana is getting so sidetracked. Of course, it was all about mm, my plan, Moon's Eye plan. And, you know, of course, he's always kind of been relaxed this whole war. But he had his plan. And all of a sudden, Hashirama comes around and it goes from plan to Hashirama. Hashirama's here. It's like no focus, Mana. Focus. He's completely distracted by Hashirama. So, I don't know. It kind of makes me a little disappointed that Madara's focus has been so easily swayed, um, but we'll see what's going on. You never know what's up uh, Madara's sleeves, so. And maybe next chapter we'll get to see, uh, you know, how Kakashi and Obito are doing. Um, that's a whole nother storyline we get to look forward to. As for predictions for next chapter, um, we're going to start to see exactly what the plan is to get rid of uh, Juvie, because so far, just putting Juvie in a barrier is not going to do much. You're trying to seal him away. How? How? I don't get it. Where's the how? How are they going to seal away the god of this, wo this world? And frankly, I'd be disappointed if he got sealed away right now. I want to see Juvie just like break out of that thing. Just, you know, undergo the final transformation and just start like causing havoc. Ah, so that's what I'm looking forward to. I don't think that'll happen next chapter. But hopefully, yeah, next chapter we'll see, get details on what exactly the Hokage are planning. And we'll get a little update on Obito and Kakashi. But we'll see. So as always, let me guys know what you thought of this chapter. Leave your comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't. And don't forget to check out my written reviews, which will come out later at naruto-reviews.tumblr.com. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys later. Bye!